And love to have you join us here on Sugar Talk with Dr. K. Jean Lucas, who's in the house. Good morning, doctor. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. And uh, what are we talking about today? Hemochromatosis. Uh, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> the original Iron Man. <laughs> uh, hemochromatosis. All right. What is that about? Well, um, it's about an iron storage disease, which is more common than people realize. I think a lot of people haven't really thought about it, but it's pretty common, and it's a genetic disorder in which your body can't get rid of iron. You store mm -hmm. all the iron that you take in. Mm -hmm. And you store too much. And so if you have too much iron, what happens is it has to, has to go somewhere and it gets deposited in the organs of your body. I think a lot of people think about it as being, uh, you know, iron. They always think of iron deficiency, but uh, some people have too much. But... Yes, too much iron. Um, so that's sort of a weird thing mm -hmm. to know about. But um, it's more common... It, it comes out more here because there's iron in the water. So um, people, hmm. if they drink the water here, they're getting an iron, you know, overload. And of course, women, you know, since they have periods every month, they don't really accumulate the iron as much as men would hmm. uh, until menopause. And so a lot of the diagnosis is not made till after menopause when they're not having uh, bleeding every month. I know that um, male um, uh, vitamins designed for senior males I think, <laughs> that don't have iron in them. I noticed that. So. No, I mean, you don't really need to take iron unless you're iron deficient. Mm -hmm. And usually you're iron deficient because you've bled. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get iron deficiency just from not eating. Although there are people that have weird <coughs> cravings, like, uh, and they it binds the iron in their body, mm -hmm. and then that, that um, gets rid of it. But most of the time... Iron is not, you, you get enough from food. You don't need to take extra iron unless you've had some kind of problem with bleeding in the past or bleeding in the present. Is it related to anemia at all? Yes, if you have, um, you need iron for hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. So hemoglobin carries oxygen through the body. So if you don't have enough iron, you, you, you get anemic. Mm -hmm. Can you test for how much iron you have? Yeah, and that's the test. Um, it's There's iron and a total iron binding capacity, and that measures the percentage of um, iron compared to normal that you have in your body. Hmm. So, And then the ferritin is a stored form of iron. Uh, ferritin is what the liver stores iron as, mm -hmm. and you can measure that to see how much iron is in your body. So if you're worried about having an iron deficiency, or say your iron level is good in your body now, but you don't know how much you've stored, then you can get a ferritin level and find out. Ferritin, is that why iron is FE? Yeah. Yeah, the ferritin. Table? Okay, all right. Uh, so um, this is this something that there are studies out for now or how to treat or how do you treat this? Well, usually you, know, you have to remove blood. Mm -hmm. So if you have too much uh, iron, leeches? you have to... <laughs> Put leeches? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you leech. <laughs> Leeches are actually would be good for this yeah, problem, exactly. I think. Yeah. Um, no, if you if you have excessive iron in your blood, you need to get it out. Hmm. And so, um, one way of getting out is to donate blood, mm -hmm. uh, or have blood drawn out of your body by just like you know, the clinic that draws blood out. It's called phlebotomy, uh, and that's when you take out blood. Mm -hmm. So we think of phlebotomy as well, drawing out blood for lab tests. Right. But when they take out blood. They might take out a whole unit um, of blood, hmm. which would be the quantity that usually you would donate. Like if you went to the Red Cross and donated right. blood, if you had out a unit, they would take out. But if you store it, aren't you just going to be producing it again anyway? Or? Yeah, I mean, you have to do other things. And, and so depending on how badly you stored it and how much iron is in your body, you know, it would be, depend on how often you had to get phlebotomies. And you may have to get a lot at first to remove the excess of iron, and then you cut back on iron in your diet, too, and you distill your water so you can get the iron out of it. You try to eliminate any extra iron, because it's a genetic problem. They don't really know exactly what causes it, but um, they don't know why people do this. You just have to eliminate taking in iron, and then you have to give iron out, let, let iron out hmm. by giving blood. Are there symptoms for this would, that you would the know? The symptoms are more from the iron depositing itself into the organs. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the reason we're talking about it, I mean, we have a study with hemochromatosis, but also 
that it causes diabetes. Mm. Because if you get iron deposition in your pancreas, the pancreas doesn't work as well. It's called bronze diabetes, because if you have excessive iron in your body, sometimes your skin turns darker. Mm. So it's sort of interesting. So bronze diabetes is diabetes caused by excessive iron that deposits in the pancreas. The other thing it does is it deposits in the liver. That's where most of the iron is stored anyway. If you have too much iron in your liver, um, you can have problems with the liver functioning and end up with cirrhosis and liver failure from too much iron. Mm. So that's yeah. another thing. And then uh, the pituitary gland and the thyroid gland get deposits of iron, so you'd have problems with low thyroid, low pituitary hormones, which would involve like low male hormone, low female hormone. So all those things can be affected by iron. It affects your whole body. Otherwise, basically. it's all those refrigerator bags that stick to you. And, and, and probably be cool. yeah, I don't know if you set off the security. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> uh, but is this a, so this is a, I would imagine if you, if it lets it go to its extreme, you're talking about shutting down organs or what? Yes. I mean, you can have liver failure, kidney failure, mm. of course, pancreatic failure. Um, and so it's not a pretty picture over time if it's left untreated. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to know. I mean, sometimes you'll know because your family members have it. Um, the people that are the worst are the ones that have inherited one gene from each parent. So mm -hmm. they're homozygous for it and they have the worst uh, iron storage. There's people that just have one gene for it and they're not as bad. Um, but you want to get the iron level down enough so that it doesn't deposit in any organs, basically. Hmm. Okay, all right. So, uh, again, this is something that you do have a study for now? Yeah, the study compares phlebotomy, which means draining blood off, mm -hmm. to an uh, iron chelator, which is already on the market for iron overload when people have to get a lot of transfusions and they get extra iron from the transfusion. Um, so they're comparing chelation of iron to um, drawing it out. So chelation would bind the iron in the blood and then um, you urinate it out mm -hmm. and get it out of your body that way. And that sounds uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rather but, than having to go to the hospital and get your blood drawn out like every month or twice a month or whatever the frequency wow. is. Wow. More, more frequent than the Red Cross would take it. Right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but, but donating blood is one of those things you can do, right? Or, or the blood that's drawn off, is that kept? I mean, they no, use it. not yeah. if you do it at a hospital. Hmm. Uh, so again, this is a, I've never I've never heard of this uh, particular issue. How prevalent is it? Oh, I don't know how common it is. It's um, it varies de depending on the region of the country, hmm. but it's fairly common um, that people should get checked for it if they have a family history of any kind of iron storage disease. Um, I don't know how often you would have to check for it. You pretty much check one time if you don't have iron storage disease now, you're not mm -hmm. going to have it in the future. Is it a chicken and egg thing with diabetes though, or does it always just cause diabetes, or does diabetes contribute to this? No, diabetes is one thing that diabetes doesn't cause, mm -hmm. which this diabetes causes amazing. a lot of things. It causes so many other things. <laughs> All right. It doesn't well, cause the iron thing. We'll have uh, more to come in a moment with uh, Sugar Talk with Dr. K. Jean Lucas, including more on studies, and also diabetes school is coming up, and not too long from now, just 12 days from now, we'll have more information on that in uh, on our next segment here on Sugar Talk with Dr. K. Jean Lucas. You can find out more online at lucasresearch.org, and you can call for an appointment at 222-5700.